For nearly the past year, I've been working on a startup where we're deploying coding assistants that learn together with the user. We're actually continually training these models in production so that they can adapt to any new problem that may arise. For example, if a user starts working with a new library that the model's never been trained on, or perhaps they're trying to implement some niche research paper that the model's never seen before, existing tools like GitHub Copilot tend to really fall flat. So to solve this, we're continually training these models on these new topics in real time as they come up. But whenever we pitch this idea, we always get the exact same question, which is, why don't you just gather the relevant data, pass it into your model's context, and solve this problem with in-context learning? Before I give you my response, I'll briefly explain what in-context learning is. It's basically just what it sounds like. Before you prompt a model with some task, the idea is that you first give it relevant context. So in the case of programming, this could be something like documentation for a library that you're using. You would pass the documentation into the model, and then because these models are trained with a long context window and with this contextual information along with relevant tasks, they tend to learn to extract information from that given context, which they can then use to solve the main task at hand. And this is a notable thing because it means that you could do something like pass the model documentation for a new library that it's never seen before, and it could potentially still work without any additional training or backpropagation. This whole approach of retrieving relevant context and then using it to generate something useful is popularly known as retrieval augmented generation, or RAG for short. And we really do get this question pretty much every time we give a technical pitch. It's always, why don't you use RAG? And this is honestly a very reasonable thing to ask given the recent history of LLMs. Just a few years ago, the maximum context length you could get was something like two to 4,000 tokens. Now you can get 10 million tokens at a fraction of the cost and with significantly better accuracy. That is crazy. And if we consider the fact that LLMs are probably going to keep getting better, it makes a lot of sense to try and solve these problems with things that rely on this long context length like RAG and in-context learning. And it's not to mention that our approach of continually training models is considerably slower and more expensive. So uh, obviously this raises the question, why would anyone ever go with our approach of continually training models in production? If you want a little challenge, actually pause the video, take a second and really think about this. Heck, leave a comment if you think you know where I'm going with this. Also, you might as well subscribe while you're at it. <laughs> okay, so hopefully you've taken a second to think about it if you want. Uh, so. Why do I say that in-context learning and RAG are not enough in the title of this video, or probably something like in-context learning isn't enough? Well, there are two critical shortcomings of a RAG approach when it comes to doing what we're doing. The first is that you won't necessarily always be able to find the context you need, and sometimes the right context won't even exist. If, for example, you've ever worked with new niche libraries or God forbid, internal tooling at any software company, you'll know what I'm talking about. Sometimes the documentation just doesn't exist, which, you know, it sucks. Uh, and in this case, maybe you could try something like retrieving relevant code snippets and using that instead. And maybe, just maybe that would kind of work. But the point is, is that as the problems you're solving approach the boundary of what humans have solved before, which is basically what research is, you'll eventually get to the point where there are no references that tell you how to do what you want to do. And RAG can be a great tool for many problems, but it alone does not enable models to solve these sorts of niche or very hard problems that we want our models to be able to solve. Because in these cases, the information we often need just doesn't exist in the first place. So that's the first reason we're not doing RAG. And the second critical shortcoming of in-context learning specifically is that the scope of what a model can learn in context is limited by the model's pre-training data. Let me explain what I mean by this with an example to clarify. If we were to train an LLM on primarily code and documentation, we would expect it to know about things like loops and conditionals. And we would expect it to be good at programming, but you know, not so good at something like writing poetry because, well, it wasn't trained on poetry. In the same way that understanding loops and conditionals are skills that a model can learn, in-context learning is just another skill that a model can learn. Though rather than one skill, it's more like a group of skills that includes things like learning via example, learning to use documentation, learning to infer via induction, and so on. And depending on the exact topics, 
model, and learning algorithm, these in-context learning skills may also be tied to a specific domain. For example, a model trained on code may be great at using examples of existing high-quality code snippets to generate new samples of high-quality code because it understands what makes the examples high-quality. But if given examples of high-quality poetry, it may fail to generate new high-quality poetry because it doesn't necessarily understand what makes the initial examples high-quality. I'm giving this example to illustrate the point that in-context learning actually consists of many different skills that are not always independent of the topic of the context. So in this prior example, that's to say the ability to learn via example was tied to the subject matter. So now getting back to my point, if you want to use a large foundation model to solve some generic task, this point is of no consequence to you. Models like ChatGPT and Claude are intentionally trained on a massive variety of data so that they will work on a massive variety of generic problems. However, if you want a model to solve the most interesting problems, invent genuinely new solutions, and surpass the limits of human knowledge and ability, then a model with frozen weights won't get you there. Even if it can learn in context, the types of patterns it can recognize and the types of things it can learn in context will be limited by its pre-training data. This is why continual learning is important, and it's why we're training models even in production at my startup. Even if it is expensive, it's because without continual learning, you are limiting the potential of what your model can learn. Note that I'm not saying we shouldn't use in-context learning. In-context learning is in fact a very powerful tool. Rather, I'm saying in-context learning alone is not enough to solve the types of problems that I want to solve. This is a problem I care a lot about, and I'm currently working on a research project related to this in my spare time, but it's not something I have time to do alone. If you have programming skills, some familiarity with ML and the subject matter, and would be interested in collaborating, uh, do reach out to me via the email link on my channel. Uh, but that's all for now. Subscribe if you want to see more of this, and thank you so much for watching.